Hi guys, welcome to the periodic tables world. Well, as as we have seen in the previous session, we continue to look at uh, at the stories at the filming of the periodic tables arrangement. Okay, and yet we are to see as to how did it actually get into the final format which we are seeing today. Well, let us see as to what was the continuation of the story which was left down by uh, Sir Dobbinier and Sir Newlands, and what were the inputs which were fetched by these particular theories taken by the next incoming scientist. Well, it was in the year eighteen sixty-eight. There was this Sir Lodemayer, okay, and he was definitely taking the help of the. discarded theories of sir newland and sir dobbinier to find out as to what would be the way by which he would be able to frame up an arrangement okay a particular order by which we could find all the elements gathered under one roof well there was a lot of effort being poured by this person because in fact the contribution given by sir mayer is the major one for this particular arrangement which we see today let me get you into the details of it well what did he do was the very first thing was he had plotted plotted what plotted physical properties against the one parameter which was taken up by sir dobbinier and sir newlands that was the atomic weight so let me tell you which were the physical properties the physical properties were like that of your atomic volume okay and secondly it was the melting and the boiling points of the elements okay and this was of course plotted against the wonderful parameter which had made such kind of theories that was the atomic weight so let me give you a hint of as to how did the graph look like it was something like this wherein supposedly if i'm having your atomic volume on the y axis of course and the atomic weight on the x axis so this particular graph went in as follows wherein i'm not plotting the right elements guys i'm just giving you an idea to give you a look as to how did this particular graph or how did this particular plot help in giving me certain kind of arrangement let me tell you so this graph was something like this definitely it's a rough one which i am making out okay so just excuse me for any kind of what you could say rough drawing which you would be seeing okay so it was simply like uh, definitely you could have the each and every kind of element being plotted on this particular lines which i have drawn okay so the ones which you are seeing as peaks over here okay these were the elements of the so called first group which we see today in our periodic table let me tell you what were the elements from this particular graph it was being seen that the first group okay just the group say like for lithium sodium potassium rubidium okay so these elements were the ones which were occupying the top positions on the plots fine so what was it occupying the top positions on the plot fine okay then comes in the second group okay so the second group consisted of elements like that of beryllium okay magnesium calcium barium all of these so these were occupying the ascending part I means supposedly if you are seeing this part okay and if at all you are thinking about these points which i am plotting now just have a look okay so this was the ascending part of the group okay or of the plot sorry and this was being occupied by these particular elements which formed the second group okay fine then comes in the halogens and the inert gases so in case of your halogens they were occupying the descending part means this part the the lower one the one which is going down ways after uh, coming at peak point okay so that was 
of course the descending part of the graph okay and not only halogens were there but we had even inert gases okay what are the inert gases the royal gases isn't it the inert gases are like that of your neon argon krypton okay so inert gases except for your helium okay that was an exceptional case except for your helium all the other inert gases okay they were also occupying the descending part of the group okay part of the plot that means this one this part was taken up by the halogens and the inert gases okay so this were the plots in fact this was not the only one plot it, it was it was even the densities it was even the melting points the boiling points all of these physical properties so what he was trying to do was he was trying to find the similarity similarity in case of which kind of elements are showing me the peaks which kind of elements are occupying the ascending part the ones on the descending part of the plot so then it clicked that yes this was a common point which could be used to group up these elements and thus this was the grouping which was done but sir lodomayer was not able to put it up properly as to what could be the actual arrangement so in fact these plots served as the best thing to be taken into consideration and frame up the arrangement which was given by sir dimitri mendeleev which is thought out to be like uh, which is thought to be like the kind of the initiator uh, for this particular arrangement let me take you over there so this is to dimitri mendeleev okay that's way back in 1869 okay so that is in 1869 this was in 1868 this is right after one year okay taking the help of these plots what did sir mendeleev do was he framed up a law his own law what was the law saying it was simply saying that the physical and the chemical properties of the elements were the periodic functions of their atomic weights okay so there are what you could say two things which are very much important in this particular law that is the physical and the chemical properties of the all elements are periodic functions of their atomic weights so this meant that when these elements are arranged in the increasing order of their atomic weights okay so there is a kind of repeatability which is seen in some set of elements it's neither 2 it's neither 3 it's neither 8 nothing like that but then there is a repeatability which is seen okay so in that case this is the word which means repeatability so physical and chemical properties of elements are periodic functions of their atomic weights yes that means after a certain period of time definitely we had a repeatability of some of their physical or the chemical properties so of course this was being emphasized or highlighted by the previous scientists also but they had ended up in grouping them in a certain number okay so mendeleev did not group it in fact i wouldn't say he didn't group it but what did he do was he considered a huge platform which was divided into vertical columns and horizontal rows so these were the what you could say the groups which were the vertical columns starting right away with zero okay and then he had some horizontal rows which were called as periods okay and thus started the arrangement he arranged all of the elements in the increasing order of their atomic weights and wherever he could see that yes there is a similarity in their chemical or physical properties he grouped them up okay and placed in one section or one chunk of that particular group fine so it was a simple what you could say a table kind of an arrangement but here the grouping was more and more elaborate more and more elaborate than dobernier than newlands than sir lodomayer so this was a wonderful start to the or a kick start to the arrangement to be done of these many elements of the of uh, what you could say of your whole universe coming together so let me tell you one more thing is that so mendeleev not always followed this particular picture in the arrangement definitely there were some elements which did not fit into this particular rule but wherever he could see similarity he grouped them together and put it up 
So for example, if I, uh, if I give you an example, it was like that of your iodine, okay, whose atomic weight was 126.9 and tellurium is something like 127.6. Now let me tell you the grouping. Why the second point which was I was talking about when the some of the elements were not actually in accordance with this rule. So in this case, my iodine was placed in group number seven, okay, along with fluorine, chlorine, and bromine. Fine. Whereas in case of tellurium, it was placed in group number six. So actually, if you see the atomic numbers, uh, atomic numbers, I mean to say atomic mass numbers, okay, these two should actually be in one kind of a set, isn't it? One kind of the group, the same group at least, but then no. My iodine belonged to group 7, whereas my tellurium belonged to group 6. Why? Because iodine was showing a strikic resemblance with the properties being set by or being given by fluorine, chlorine and bromine. So this made up one family. Okay, and tellurium was slided off into some other section wherein its properties matched with those elements. Fine. So Sir Mendeleev had given a very proper, elaborate, informative arrangement, you could say. Okay. More on, I mean, adding to all of these kinds, definitely what he did was he had left gaps for the undiscovered elements. Okay. So this particular, what you could say, uh, Facility was uh, being given by Sir Mendeleev's table also, wherein he did not disregard it or he did not, uh, what you could say, he did not leave gaps. He definitely left gaps for the undiscovered ones. And, the, uh, and in this case, what tend to happen was, almost after you could say, like uh, it was around 36 years, okay, he had given in this particular table. So, as soon, I mean, as when he was done with the arrangement, the publishers started just hurrying up for the table to be arranged in a, uh, in a proper manner and just given for the publishing part. So altogether, it was published, you would be shocked to know, it was published in 1905. Imagine such a big gap, guys, such a big gap. Isn't it right? So it was published in 1905, and at that point of time, it was seen that yes, this particular arrangement is quite clear as compared to the other ones which were being framed up, isn't it? So, if at all I go to see the uses or uh, what you could say the drawbacks of this theory as to why it wasn't considered, let me tell you or let me give you a, a glimpse of it is that the uses were that the atomic weights were determined. Okay, atomic weights of different elements were determined due to this particular arrangement. Okay, wherever undiscovered ones were left, it was imagined or the properties were simply predicted. And actually, after so many years when the elements were discovered, the, the particular element found to give the same chunk of properties which was predicted at that particular period of time. So this was a wonderful arrangement being done. Secondly, even uh, what you could say, when helium and argon was discovered, it actually gave the possibility of building up a whole family of such kind of elements. Okay, that, that was later on known as the noble gases family. And at that point of time, Sir William Ramsey, okay, he was a wonderful scientist who actually, when, when the possibility of having a family was predicted, it led to the idea and in fact, it led to the discovery of the noble gases after that. They were uh, like your krypton and xenon. So that was that discovery was given by Sir Ramsey. And in fact, it was initiated by this particular idea of having a whole family of such kind of elements. So this also actually, I would say, initiated the discovery of krypton and xenon to add on into the family as members. Okay. Now, adding on to this, we definitely had some radioactive work related series which was going on and that was in concerns with the elements like that of your uranium and thorium. So some work related to the radioactive research was going on and definitely that was being guided by this particular arrangement of Mendeleev's sir, which was called as the periodic table you could say. Okay. But then in addition to these uses, there were some defects also. What were the defects? The defects were as follows, okay. Of course, wherever uses are there, defects and drawbacks will be there. The very first thing was hydrogen's position was absolutely uncertain. Why? Because it was behaving both as a metal and as a non-metal. So it was quite difficult to give its position. 
secondly even isotopes of every elements were not given in positions okay and thirdly there were no separate places or no separate positions for elements like that of your lanthanides and actinides so these three problems were there these three major drawbacks were there definitely we had some more drawbacks wherein elements uh, supposedly if its atomic number is greater okay so it was being placed prior to the one which was lesser okay so the arrangement was a bit what you could call called as some kind of an anomalous nature or rather we you could say some ambiguity was being seen so such kind of arrangements were not being justified and thus mendeleev sir definitely prepared a very good elaborate info, uh, informative table but yet it was to be completed and yes there was uh, an input needed to give you a very well framed periodic table so there was a yet kind of a space uh, to be given to frame this particular arrangement okay so let us see as to what was the final take on all of these uh, inputs which was given by majorly by sir dimitri mendeleev although it did not go waste it definitely helped sir mosley who framed the wonderful periodic table which we see today okay so hats off to sir mendeleev and sir lodomir and the incoming scientist sir mosley okay so let us discover and let us get into the discovery story of the modern periodic table which we see and thus we can start off with the lesson See you in the next session over there with Sir Mosley's story. Thank you.